sincerity to it, didn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> speed. All right, and answer right into the lens, if you will. This yes. is the. We got speed. Speed. All right, this is the Maceo Parker interview. Although you play 98% funk and only 2% jazz, Maceo. Now uh, you have many fans among the jazz audience. How do you explain this? <laughs> I. Uh... My name is Macy Parker. I uh, often think of my concept of uh, my performance as 2% jazz and 98% funky stuff. Uh, the concept was brought to me and helped form by my producer, a uh, German guy by the name of Stefan Miner. Uh, he somewhat uh, thought that since I was from the James Brown sound, so to speak, or uh, and also part of uh, Bootsy Collins, Bootsy's Rubber Band, and George Clinton, you know, with all the Funketeer fans throughout the world, it would be a, maybe a good idea to do 2% uh, uh, jazz, a little bit of jazz. And we kept that concept in our uh, first albums uh, which we came up with the uh, Roots Revisited and Mo Roots. Uh, since then we have picked up what we like to think of as jazz fans uh, to help uh, somewhat balance out the fact that we have a lot of the funky fans, people who love to hear us play funk and the people who love to hear us play jazz. So with a marriage of the, the two kind of concepts we have a lot of fun and get a lot of work. Great. Uh, Major Charlie Parker has had an influence on virtually every type of musician. How's the bird affected your approach to your music? I'm often asked if, since my last name is Parker, is uh, did Charlie Parker have any type of influence on me? Uh, I I listen to a lot of great uh, saxophonists, if you, as it were, when I was. Um, Coming up, I and, and Charlie Parker is, is indeed uh, uh, premier uh, alto player anyway. Um, but I, I um, as a as a young musician, I tried to have and create my own style. Uh, I thought it would be better uh, to to play like Maceo Parker rather than uh, somebody with the same namesake. Uh, I love Charlie Parker. I love all uh, musicians, you don't have to be saxophone players. I just love the fact, to me, it's like a, a, a great uh, uh, fraternity, sorority kind of a kind of a deal to be among all the great entertainers and, and musicians. Uh, but I, I try not to uh, be influenced that much by, by anybody, maybe other than Ray Charles. Major, sure the J.B. Horns have a unique style and sound. Tell us about the evolution and how you developed this style. Well, here again, most of the guys, uh, Fred Wesley, trombonist, Pee Wee Ellis. Could you, excuse me, could you start this with I'm sorry. J.B. Horns? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. J.B. Yeah. Horns, ready? I was into the... Oh, yes, right, go. The J.B. Horns, somehow we, we all started, as, as everybody know, uh, with James Brown. And I can't remember what year it was when we decided somewhere down the line maybe we should, should do something. Maybe we should have a group. Maybe we should form something. Maybe we should try to you know, travel around and, and, and uh, like that. Uh, we didn't know what we would call it. Uh, we didn't know what we were going to record. We didn't know, uh, you know how it was going to be, how it was going to you know, turn out. It was going to be a Maceo Parker thing, a Fred Wesley thing. However, we knew we liked each other as musicians. We, uh, had worked together uh, a lot of years with James Brown and we knew that somewhere down the line, this must have been 10 years ago, somewhere down the line we would, would have some, some kind of group. Uh, so we, we call it J.B. Horn sometimes. Sometimes we have Macy or Parker Roots we visit, sometimes with Fred Wesley, J.B.'s and, and, and P. Wells, P. Wells Assembly. Uh, it's only out of the fact that we like each other and, and we compliment each other when we perform. Besides the bird, and then I may, uh, this is a redundant question, who has affected you most in your playing? Who have you admired over the years? When you were a younger man, who was your idol? I 
again, I'm often asked uh, if if I have idols or if, did I have idols as a, as a young musician, and I always have to mention Ray Charles. I I, I don't think I was as serious about uh, becoming a musician or even listening to music until I uh, heard Ray Charles. I I remember listening to something like Old Man River or George on My Mind or something like that, and I. And I remember uh, saying to myself, as I must have been about 13, 14 years old, I, I suppose, said to myself, God, you know, this guy, you know, genius of soul, because jazz or something, one of the albums, Ray Charles, uh, must be a genius because he has so much soul, so much talent, you can almost see it, you can almost feel it. And I remember saying, if I uh, were an entertainer or a musician, if I could play or uh, have half the feelings Ray Charles has, uh, did I can feel that I'm well on my way. There are a few saxophone players who I who I um, enjoyed listening to. Uh, uh, out of Ray Charles' band, it was Hank Crawford, uh, David Newman, um, and and then out of his band it was uh, Stanley Turrentine, uh, King Curtis, um, and uh, my high school band director by the name of James Banks. Uh, all of these people had a little bit of influence on me. Did uh, one final question? Did you uh, did you start out to be a musician when you when you were in school? What did you decide you were going to do with your life? I don't suppose it was I'm going to be a musician when I get to be a grown up man, or was it? I'm asked, uh, you know, when did I decide to be a musician and entertainer? And I I don't know. I think uh, I think. The concept back then was to get an education, get a degree, and teach. Uh, and I think something like after my second year of college, uh, I found out that my high school band director was tr was getting ready to get a job with Lloyd Price. And then I I had to think it kind of because it set me set me aside for a minute. I said, well, wait a second, I'm trying to get where he is. He's going to join uh, Lord Price band, so maybe there's something other than teaching. Uh, and then the opportunity came for me to work with James Brown and just kind of stay parallel with my high school band director. I decided to work with James Brown. Have you got any advice for the young people coming up in the music business? What would be your words of wisdom to the young people? Well. If I had words for young musicians or young uh, entertainers, uh, I think I would I would have something like is I, th I think it's best to try to not really uh, imitate uh, any anybody. I think it's, it's I think it's best to you know try to do as it were uh, quote your own thing, uh, hang in with it. Uh, if you love it, you're gonna do it anyway, and and just you know practice, practice, stay with it, and uh, pretty soon something good is gonna happen. Uh, and just keep the faith. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you.